and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world. Today we're going to have a lot of fun because I'm going to show you a fun stencil technique that you can do right now. I'm sure you have plenty of floral stencils in your collection that you can use for this technique, and I really like this one. Now, I was watching Kathy Z's live yesterday, and I was kind of screaming through the screen for her to do this but I, it's really hard to convey without showing somebody what I'm talking about. So I kind of decided not to type it into her comments, but I think this would have worked really great with what she was doing yesterday. And so I thought this is a great opportunity for me to try it today and see how you guys like it. So, but before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Good morning, craft or evening, noon, everybody. <laughs> how are you? I am better than horrible. <laughs> That's what the sign says anyway, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Very fun. And um, you're, uh, you, you just been running around all morning. I have, I've been all over the place like crazy and my eyeball is flaring up again. So I have my regular glasses to wear today, which is kind of tough because if you wear really high strength prescription glasses to see far, then it's really hard to read. And the only way I can read is if I hold them like this on my face. <laughs> this is the way I got to wear them to read. <laughs> so Nice. I have to get clip-on readers to put on top of these glasses. And I know they have them because I looked it up earlier. Getting complicated. I know it really is. Isn't it getting old is not for chickens, <laughs> not for sissies, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Well, why don't we get started right away on today's technique? So here's the stencil that I'm going to be using today. This is the one from the brand new kit. Well, it's not new anymore. It's been out for a month and it's actually retiring at the end of this week. So, you know, if you didn't get it yet, you might want to get it. But this stencil set will become available as an a la carte item. This is the one that I'm going to use. It's called Summer Bouquet. Is that what it says? Let me turn my glasses. Yes, Summer Bouquet. And it's a three-piece layering stencil, but of course you can use any floral design. You don't even have to use a layering stencil for this. I've got other stencils here in my collection that I think that this would work great with. Uh, let's just, it would work great with our holiday, that big, beautiful poinsettia. It's called a uh, perfect poinsettia. Would work great with that. It would work great with bodacious bloom. It would work with, great with bold bloom. That huge, um, gorgeous. Let me see. Got to see it. Layered peony. Anything like that. And then if you don't have a layered one, even something simple like this one, which is just our our bold floral fl uh, stencil. It'll work great with something like this as well. But I'm using this one because I haven't given this one enough love yet in my videos for the month. And I wanted to give you a second card design for this one. So what you're going to do to start, let me zoom out just a little bit here. What you're going to do, yes, the beach chair die set will be sold separately. That was a free gift in the kit, but that is coming out separately. Okay, what you're going to start with is a quarter sheet of cardstock. And Tom, if you see Kathy Zilski in here, let me know. Um, so I am going to start with this, and I'm going to use my Misty as my stencil mat. Now, a lot of you might not think that you can do that, but if you have the Misty mouse pad, it, it makes a great stencil mat. You can ink blend on it. You can wash it off. Certain colors might stain it a little bit, but I've even done some of the worst reds in our collection that stain, and then I clean it with a little Gina K Design stamp cleaner, and it comes up perfectly clean. Now, it's not sticky, obviously, 
um, the way a stencil mat is, but if you don't mind putting a tiny little bit of tape on the back of your cardstock, it works really well. So if you don't have one and you wanted to do something like this, have at it. All right, so I am gonna put a little bit of tape here on the back of my cardstock just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna use this part of the mat as my guide for this. This is not necessary. You could have just a plain piece of paper on the table. Just what you wanna do is you wanna mark where you're putting your cardstock and then where you're putting your stencil. So if you're doing this on a plain piece of cardstock, what I would do is I'd put it on the cardstock and then I would take a pen or a pencil and just put a little mark here and a little mark there. This way, you know where to pop the next one in to make it match. So if you don't have a mat at all, you can certainly do that. And then you would do the same thing with the stencil. So if you were putting your cardstock here and then you were putting your stencil here, then you would just mark where the end of the stencil is so that you can line up your stencils very easily. Okay, so. Um, I do start most of my projects with a quarter sheet of cardstock, but every once in a while I'll do a six by six piece if the design is super big and I'm not sure where I want to cut it because most of our stencils are six by six. Okay, so I, I'm putting that one right there and I'm taping it down just so that it doesn't move. And then I'm going to start with layer one, which is the florals. And this I'm going to take right to the end of the misty mat. This way I can line it up the same every time, okay? Now, if you don't like this, let's move it. We can move it. With the mat, that's really cool because you could say, all right, I'm going over two squares, two rows of squares. Then you can look at that and say, ah, no, that's too much over there. I'm going to move it and just go one row of squares over like that. Okay. So now I've lined it up. I like where it is because I have all three flowers in the mix. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down with a little bit of pixie tape. And you can reuse pixie tape, that's for sure. So, you know, you don't have to throw it away every time you use it. Although after a while it starts to lose a little bit of its stick, but that would make sense, right? Because it's tape. It's a just it's a consumable item. Okay, so now I have this stencil where I want it. And you can see at, if I put the rest of the stencils on top, everything is going to layer out just perfectly. I know that's hard to see through it, but if you hold it up to the light, you would be able to see that everything lines up perfectly. And you want to make sure when you're doing layered stencils that if the stencil has a marking on it, that all of the marks are in the same spot. Because if you do have it flipped over, it's not going to line up. Now, for this technique, what you want to do is you want to use a light color and a dark color. So in the case of some of our Gina K Designs inks, we have these trios. These are our carnations, light, medium, and dark. You could use light and medium, or you could use light and dark. But if you don't have inks like this, and you have other inks in your collection, like our regular ink collection, you could use the Lemon Drop and the Wild Dandelion. You can use, let's see here, Powder Blue and Blue Denim. You just want a light and a dark. The grid is not raised at all. It's completely flat on this uh, misty mat. And it's the misty mouse pad it's called. So works as a mouse pad. You can flip it over for the black side if you, for um, uh, wreath building. And um, you know, it's great because you can stamp on it. You wipe the ink off. I, I love it. I use it for everything. Hey, Kathy Z's here. I see her. Kathy, I was screaming at you through my monitor. I wanted you to try today's technique. Um, so I'm glad you're here because the wreath card that you made yesterday on your channel was so beautiful. And then when you decided to cut it down with the master layouts, I was screaming for you to try this. So when you see this technique today, I think you'll be like, oh yeah, that kind of would have looked cool too. But I loved your card. If you haven't seen Kathy's card, make sure you check out her YouTube channel. She used our wreath builder and did a beautiful card. And then she cut it down and added some gold. It was really pretty. Okay, so 
I, I decided to go with some of our newer colors, like the carnations, the orchids, the lilacs, and the spruces, just because it makes it easy. And I know a lot of you recently have picked these colors up. So I'm going to start with lights. So this piece is going to be all light colors. And then I'm going to repeat the entire process on another piece of cardstock with all dark colors. So I'm going to start with a brush that I have dedicated to my orchids here. And I'm going to just rub off any color to make sure that this light is going to stay light. And I'm going to start with the light orchid. So I'm going to put that in my ink stand here and I'm going to ink this up. And then I am going to ink up these flowers with light orchid. So I'm starting at the base of each flower and then working my way up so it gets fairly light at the top. Same thing with this one. And same thing with this one. Okay. I do want to make sure that it's filled in, but I like how light it is at the tops, at the tips of these flowers. See how light that is? It's very, very sweet and soft. Now, I don't have to clean these stencils because I'm going to be using the darker versions of these. So I don't have to clean it, right? Because it doesn't matter. It's not going to affect my blending brush. But there's my first color. I'm going to put that aside. I could leave the pixie tape on and just put new pixie tape on each layer, but I'm being frugal. Frugal. All right, so now I'm going to use the leaves, the leaves part, the leaves and stems, and I'm going to pop that right into that same spot. And you can see everything lines up beautifully here. Okay. And I know it goes off the bottom a little bit. That's okay. We're okay with that. And now I'm going to use the light spruce for this. So once again, I have a brush for my spruces. I actually did a big and a small blending brush for each of the three packs, like the three colors, just because I like to keep those separate. And this green is really different from all of our other greens. So I really wanted to keep it separate. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm inking this brush up and I am adding it to all of these stems and leaves. The name of that stencil again. This is called Summer Bouquet. And right now it's part of that vintage summer kit that I've been using all month. Um, it will be available next week. As long as we have supply left, it will be available as a standalone stencil. If we don't have enough supply left to put it in right away, it will go on order immediately, and then it will be back as part of our regular inventory. All right. And you can see I'm just adding that light, and I'm not worried about shading too much, but I am just kind of leaving some of it closer to the white side. Okay. All righty. Now I'm going to take that off. And you can see this is just really pretty and delicate. Not a lot of bright color here, but really pretty. Now I'm going to go with my final stencil. And once again, I'm checking to where that bottom writing is so that I make sure it lines up. And you can see all of that lines up perfectly because, again, I'm butting it up against my misty mat. There are so many great mats out there, so I know it's confusing and it's like, which one should I get? But my thought is if you already have a Misty, just give it a try. What I mean, what do you have to lose if it doesn't work out? You know, you still need the Misty mat. So, all right. And I'm going to go with some light lilac on this one. Now, if I want to do these little berry designs in a different color, I can. And just to make it a little bit easier for me, what I'm going to do is take a post-it note and I'm going to cut a little triangle off of one of the little sticky sides here, just like that. And then that is just the right size to cover the little triangles. And I can just peel that off 
I say that I can, but maybe I can peel that off and just, you know, move it to the next one. So this way, that's kind of a little quick makeshift mask. And you can see how quickly I made that. It didn't take anything. And I can still use the rest of this post-it note for something. So let me put it back on the pad. You can also use a little piece of masking magic for something like that. All right, now I'm going to, I think I'm going to use the smaller brush for this because these are a little bit smaller and I really want to clean that. There's not much on there. And then I'm going to, once again, pop this right in here. And this is going to allow me to do all of these. And down here I can do this. And I really just need it in these little spots right here. All right. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see all of you here. You know, it's harder for people to get away during lunch or during the day. So really appreciate you making time for us today. Tom, I think you have a word of the day coming up, don't you? I do. I have several, actually. Oh, my God. We've got a theme. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for the words of the day. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you can see I'm using this light lilac. It's a really pretty color too. And once again, you can see I'm going just a little heavy on one side, but I'm keeping it a little light on the other side. Not to like create any real light because I don't know how to do that, but it creates shading. And honestly, I think for me as a card maker, and I've talked about this before, I remember I was taking a coloring class from Kathy Sanders, who is this amazing artist. She does things with colored pencils that are amazing. She's also one of our managers here at Gina K Designs. And she was teaching a class at Gina K Designs and I jumped in and took the class. And I said to her, Kathy, can you teach me how to do shading? And she said, well, let me ask you what you're really looking for. Are you looking to learn how to shade and see light or are you just looking for lights and darks? And I thought, yeah, I'm just kind of looking for lights and darks. And that's so much easier when you think about it. You just need some parts that are light and some parts that are dark if you're not worried about where the light is coming from. And it still looks beautiful. So that's my level of art knowledge. Okay. All right. So now I've got all of those little flowers done. I'm not going to take the stencil off yet because I'm going to fill in these little berries. And I'm going to do that with the carnations. I feel like the carnations might be a good one to do that with, although I do think it would be pretty to have a little splash of orange in there or a little splash of yellow. <sighs> I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Would you like to see yellow or would you like to see orange or pink? Let's just, I don't, we, we can't do a poll. I know Kathy was talking about doing a poll yesterday. We can't do a poll with our software, but if anybody wants to tell me what they think, oh, yellow, I, I got the first vote for yellow pink, dark pink, orange, yellow, 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 pink. Okay, Tom, what do you see the most of? It looks like the most is, uh, would you say, I have to say yellow? Yellow. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. We're going to go with yellow. Um, and I know it's hard when you voted for another color and I apologize to anybody that's feeling let down. <laughs> Now you see what I'm doing here? I'm wiping the stencil off. And the reason I'm doing that is because purple and yellow make brown. They do not look good together. So I wanted to get the purple off the stencil just in case when I'm ink blending over that, I don't want any of that. Uh, I don't want it to grab the, uh, the purple at all. So I'm just going to clean this brush. That is an orange brush. I need a yellow baby brush. Let me see. Do I have a yellow baby brush? Why well, don't I have a yellow baby brush? All right. Oh, come on. Come on. I must have a yellow baby brush. I do. It was hiding. Here it is. I just want to clean that off because it might have some. I know red would look really good because it's berries, but I just want to add this alternative color in there and probably should have done like pink on these flowers or, or yellow on these flowers and then red on the berries. But we're going to live with this mistake here. No matter what, we'll be okay. So I'm adding little lemon drop in there. Now I saw a lot of orange in there too. A lot of people were saying orange. So if this doesn't look good, maybe we'll have to go back and add a little orange, but I think it's going to look okay. 
remember, we're like pasteling it here a little bit. Okay. So now we can take this stencil off and you can see what that looks like. I think that looks really pretty. I like it. Now, if you don't, you know, if you weren't a big fan of the yellow, I actually see a little purple got in there. I must have missed on this one. Let me line this back up again. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a little touch of orange to this. Just a little bit with my baby orange brush. That is not an orange. Here we go again. Just a little tiny bit of orange. And I'll use sweet mango. Where's my sweet mango? And then I'll use tangerine twist, which I'll show you the difference. You can see the sweet mango is a lighter version of orange, so we could use those two. And I'll add a little bit of this into it just to brighten it up a little bit. It'll make it a little more sunny. Okay. My creative license was revoked. <laughs> Did you vote for something? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. So now we have this layer finished and we're going to put this aside. Okay. And we're going to take another piece of cardstock. And now we're going to do a lot more dramatic types of things here. Now, remember, we went one row over from here. So this will make it all in the same exact spot as this one was. And now we're going to go back to the first stencil, make sure we have it on the right side. And now we're going to use the more bold, vibrant colors. So we have to remember what we used. The first one was the orchids. So now we're going to use, we, we could start with a little light orchid, but we can deepen it up with the medium and dark, or we can go right for medium. Let's go right for medium. Let's be brave. So here's the medium orchid. And I'll get my same orchid brush. And I'm gonna darken this up here. Oh, this is such a gorgeous, vibrant color. If you love pinks and purples and like magenta and fuchsia, this is your color right here. This is so vibrant. Well, and I'd like to just shoot a welcome out to everybody that's here. Thank you for joining us today. We love having you here. Okay, I'm almost done here. And then I'm going to add some darker to this. But you can see how much more vibrant this is already than this one, right? Now let's go with a little darker. Let me make sure this one's got enough. This is a gorgeous color for stenciling. And you know, all of our ink cube, all of our ink pads in colors come in cubes too. So if you're on a budget and you still want the vibrant collections, definitely try the cubes because you can ink a blend with cubes just as easily. Now I'm going to go just along the bottom here and I'm going to deepen up this color with this dark orchid. I love doing this kind of technique. It just gives the image so much depth. It's almost like a layered stencil. When you add that little layer of dark right along the edge like this, you can also do like a second color all along the tips if you want, like a, an orange or something like that to really brighten that up. But I love the, the depth that this gives the image. Okay, so let's take this off. See, isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love that. Well, you don't really have a color that matches the orchids perfectly, but I would say you could definitely get away with, um, yeah. see, I'm more likely with the colors like this to go with like a gray card base, something more neutral so that the color really pops. 
But if you want it to look like you have colored cardstock, just take a quarter sheet of cardstock and ink blend over it and then pop that onto the front of your card on the, to the front of your white card base and it will look like an orchid background. This way you can pick whatever orchid you want, light, medium, or dark. All right, now we're gonna move to the next one. Make sure that the stencil is in the right position. And now we're gonna go with that medium and dark spruce. If we ultimately do cardstock for these, we will probably choose the medium color. We won't do all three because manufacturing cardstock is extremely expensive. And, um, you know, to have, to have a medium orchid that will match either dark, light, or medium would be a real nice compromise. Okay, so let me get the medium spruce. So here's the light spruce. Now we're gonna go with the medium. And I'm using the same brush. I'm not worried about cleaning it because it had light spruce on it last time. Hey, it's good to see you. I know a lot of people are switching over from watching us on Facebook to watching us on YouTube. I don't know why, you know, like what the big difference is, but I feel like I feel like it's easier to interact over here on YouTube. So for those of you that have come over and joined us here on YouTube from Facebook, that's awesome. And also I'd like to extend a warm welcome. My Twitch channel is growing. So thanks for joining me on Twitch too. Usually nighttime people come on Twitch. So when we do our nighttime lives, but it's kind of fun to be able to meet new people on Twitch. And I think all the people I'm meeting on Twitch are really new to card making, which is super exciting. Because you guys know the first time you see car uh, card making and like what it means, it's like, oh my gosh, I got to try that. <laughs> the picture's bigger. Okay, the picture's bigger here on YouTube. All right, now I'm going to use the dark and I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to do a little bit of accenting. I'm going to use the smaller blending brush and I'm going to do a little bit of accenting just in certain parts. So I'm going to do like a little bit down here. You can see that. Should I zoom in just a little bit? Would that be easier for you guys to see that? There we go. So you can see how I darkened that up a little bit. Do the same in here. And this just really gives you that layered stencil feel. Now I'm going to do a little bit here and there, like on the bottoms of these leaves. Same over here on the bottoms of these. And it's okay if you catch a little of the stem. It's not an exact science. But you can see with Gina K Designs ink, the blending, the smoothing agent in this, it just smooths everything together so beautifully. There is just no, um, no blotchiness. It's so nice. Of course, you want to use the good cardstock too. That makes a difference. And I know there'll be people out there that tell you all blending brushes are the same, but they absolutely are not. And the only reason why I know that, I thought that too, because I found our manufacturer. I'm like, I need blending brushes. And they're like, okay, what kind of brush do you want? I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, we're going to send you a whole bunch of different samples of bristles and you tell us what you like. So I think a lot of the less expensive ones are made with a little bit of a cheaper, stiffer bristle, even though they feel soft. Once you feel these, you're, you're like, oh, okay, I, I do see the difference. Okay, so there we've got that. Let's pull this up and see what it looks like. Look at that. So vibrant, right? And you can see I'm still in the same color family as this. But this almost looks like you're looking through a frosted window now, right? Although this was really pretty by itself. Now with the vibrance of this, wow. Okay, now I'm going to clean these three areas of orange off with my tidy towel. Because I'm going back to that purple and we do not want any brown happening at all on this. So I'm just cleaning that off with my tidy tail. Make sure I got rid of all of that orange. 
And now I'm going to pop this into place and we're gonna go real vibrant with medium lilac instead of the light lilac. And maybe we'll even go a little darker. Maybe we'll go with like tomato soup or something like that instead of the sweet mango. We'll go with tomato soup because that will really make, it'll be closer to the red that you all wanted. All right, so we're going with medium and I am gonna use that smaller brush this time. Where's my little sticky? Here it is. I'm going to block that off. Okay. So now here we go. Going in. Love purple. I mean, come on. Who doesn't love purple? I know there's people that don't love purple. That's rhetorical, that question. <laughs> but I love purple. But you know what? I mean, I think when it comes to most crafters, we haven't really met a color we don't love because we can find a use for everything. And maybe purple isn't your go-to, but you know that splash of purple in a bouquet looks so lovely that it's hard not to, to have it in there. We're gonna go a little darker on the bottoms of these too. See the way I'm kind of, coming in from the side to get that a little bit darker, like in this area here, and it's keeping it lighter on the other side. That's my lights and darks. Has nothing to do with seeing the light. <laughs> I have not seen the light. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the same down here. Because you know, I've got like light coming from one direction here, and then I'm gonna have it coming from the other direction over here. Again, I don't care. I just love the color and the vibrance. Okay, now let's let's add just a little bit of darker. This is this is the medium. Here's the dark lilac. And we'll just put a little tiny bit of this down near the bottom just to deepen it up a little bit. Almost got it in the holes. Forgot, but luckily, luckily it didn't happen. Okay. Now I'm gonna wipe that color off with this paper towel so we can go with our lighter color here in the, in the berries. So should I do the same two step, step or should I just go straight away for the darker orange? I think I'll go straight away, deeper orange. So here now we've had sweet mango and tomato soup. So when I clean my blending brushes, and it's a great question, I get asked a lot. I have a blending brush for every color family. So I have one for reds, one for yellows, one for greens, one for blues, which gives me 10 blending brushes for the different color families because I include browns, blacks and grays, and tans. So when I, when I clean my brush for the most part, if I'm using my orange brush and I wanna go from sweet mango to tomato soup, I just rub the brush off on a paper towel until it gets super light. I never wash my brushes. I don't think it's necessary to wash your brushes. I find that, um, you know, you kind of risk them, the glue getting loose in the, in the casing. But if you are gonna wash them, wash them with a very low sudsing shampoo like Johnson's baby shampoo don't use something that really suds up and then when you dry them dry them face down so that the water pools away from the casing if you if you dry them on their back like this the water will pool in the casing and it will loosen the glue and it'll um, shorten the lifespan of the brush all right a little bit of tomato soup in here little pop of bright orange is so nice. All right, I think that'll do it. Now 
Now, I know the other one had the, the yellow in it, but there you go. I think it's going to be okay. Oh, I should probably take this off to show you the there you go. Yeah, some people do wipe theirs on something damp, like people use the tidy towel and they just rub it over the surface of the tidy towel and that's totally fine. You can take your blending brush, rub it over the tidy towel, see how it pulls the color off, but you're not getting all of this super wet. And then I would dry it on a paper towel to get any excess off and then give it just a little bit to dry if it's wet. Okay, look at that. Isn't that pretty with all those colors? So you can see we've got the light version and the dark version. Okay. So now we need this one. Now we're going to start our fun layout. All right, Tom, while I'm cleaning up, because I got to get rid of some of these ink pads, how about we talk about the word of the day? I think it's a good time to talk about the word of the day. Okay, well, we've got a whole theme going for the words of the day today. Words of the day. All so right. you have you have diabetes, right? Type I have one. diabetes. I am a type one diabetic. Yes. Yes, and you've been working with that for years. So yes. that's the theme. Oh, <laughs> the theme is my diabetes. For the words of the day. Yes. <laughs> yes. So okay. if you're out and about, and you're let's see, you're running errands, and um, you pass by a really really nice bakery. Oh, and and the the smell of the bakery is wafting through the neighborhood. You might at that point be experiencing cryabetes. <laughs> cry That's true. Abetes. And then um, ten minutes later, when you come out of there with a bag of long johns, you might be experiencing nice triabetes. <laughs> Right? Yes. <laughs> Been there quite often. <laughs> All then, right, I have one. <laughs> okay. Okay, so then I go to my doctor and he asks me, have you been uh, following the diet and exercise plan? And I say, absolutely. That's liabetes. <laughs> <laughs> liabetes, right? Or deniabetes. Yeah, deniabetes. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> And a few more. If you're uh, celebrating Independence Day and you overdo it, you might be experiencing uh, Fourth of July diabetes. <laughs> and um, finally, <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're traveling the Holy Land <laughs> and okay. you're out on an excursion and you forget your your martyr bars. Your, your, My martyr bars. <laughs> your sugar, your sugar diabetes emergency bars. You might be experiencing Mount Sinai diabetes. <laughs> oh my God. All right, that one. <laughs> that's a stretch right there. <laughs> Ready for the dead space. Thank you very Mount much. Mount Sinai Oh my God. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. That was really very funny. I love diabetes jokes. Just my opinion. I'm a diabetic. Don't shoot me. Okay, so now we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get to the next part of this <laughs> of this uh, card, and this is where we're going to do a two tone thing where we're gonna use this as our card front, but then we're going to accent just part of this more vibrant piece. I hate to cut this up, but I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna look at. Master Layouts 2, but I think if I use Master Layouts 2, the big one, and this is what Kathy was doing yesterday. She was trying to figure out like where to cut. Um, if I cut that, that's so much of it. And I'm going to lose the look of so much of this. So instead of using this big one, I'm going to use something a little bit smaller from the master layouts too. So I'm going to cut a chunk right there. Okay. So that's what I'm going to cut. I want to make sure that I have a little bit of everything. And then this is going to give me room for my greeting over here. So I want to make sure I have a little bit of everything so that you can see the orange, you can see that bright uh, purple in there and all of that. And I'm going to cut, but I want to make sure that it's even. I don't want to cut it like this. You want to make sure that you've got it kind of even. And when I say even, 
I mean that it's like straight up and down, you know, because this is going to actually be kind of the focal image of the card. All right, so I think I'm going to use a little bit of pixie tape for this to make sure it stays down. I know it's terrible to, <laughs> to cut this, but I have to do it. get that there and we'll get this here just to hold it in place okay that looks straight i think that looks pretty straight okay so i'm cutting it and this is with the stitched die this is all still part of type 2 type 2 diabetes this is <laughs> this is all part of master layouts too oh my gosh now you've got me thinking about diabetes tom <laughs> Now, don't throw this piece away, and here's why. Because this will make a gorgeous frame. You can put something behind here. You can put a focal image behind here. You don't have to throw this away. This is a beautiful frame for something else. Okay. I really wanted to make sure I got this part, so that's why I cut it here. But if you're not so worried about what part you have, then yeah, you definitely could probably get two of them out of there. Or you could, you know, do a strip or something for another one. Now, I'm also going to use the smaller of, the larger of the dies here in Master Layouts 2, in Type 2 Diabetes. <laughs> and I'm going to cut a black panel. Somebody that just tuned in is wondering, what the heck is she talking about? And um, all I can say to you is, I don't know. So, because <laughs> I barely know what I'm talking about most of the time. <laughs> Okie dokie. I'm going to cut a piece here, just a quarter sheet of this off to the side here because I didn't have any more black scraps, believe it or not. And now I'm going to cut this out. And you know, when you turn it a little bit like this, it goes through the machine much easier without a struggle. It's so funny. Yes, we've got to have the black panel. The black panel is going to make all the difference, I think, in this particular layout. So now, this is going to get positioned over that, and then we're going to line this up. So, and once it lines up, you can really see the impact of that. How beautiful that is, right? Isn't that so pretty? So, Kathy, this is what I was yelling through the screen yesterday for you to do with your wreath. <laughs> <laughs> Although, the way you ended up doing it, I don't think it could have been any pretty. <clears throat> Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to adhere these two panels together. Okay, let's do that. And then we're going to take it up a notch because we're going to pop it up. So instead of laying it flat, which you can, you can lay it flat if you want. Gotta line it up. You can see it's perfect because we did all that lining up on the original design. I mean, when we were laying it out on the on the mouse pad, so we knew where we were gonna do this. But I think it will have even more impact if we just pop it up a little bit. All right. So now we could trim this down ever so slightly and put a black backing on it, but I don't think I want to do that because I think it's going to have more impact if we have, that's ivory, we have a white card base and we just pop it right on the front so it just looks like the front of the card. Now, maybe we could have done all the stenciling right on the card front by just folding the card in half, but I was a little apprehensive to put tape on the back just in case something ripped and it would have been really sad. So I feel like it's okay to, you know, pop this panel onto this piece and it'll still look like a card front. You know what I mean? Okay. So, whew, I am sweating. It is hot in here. And it was kind of chilly out this morning. I don't know what's happening with our weather. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I'm glad it went it worked out because I was anxious too. I see some of you saying I was really anxious when you started to cut it. I I was too. I am 
going to be honest with you. I am very grateful <laughs> that it turned out looking as good as it did. <laughs> okay, so that is going to work. So I'm going to add some tape all over this. I know it's a lot of tape. That's okay. And then I'm going to line it up just by making sure that lines up nicely. I think that's pretty good there. So we can do anything we want on the inside. And then here's my dilemma. Do I pop it up or do I just lay it right on there? And it really depends on a lot of things. If you're going to mail it, you might not want to pop it up. It would be just as pretty like this. But you know what we can do? We can kind of look at what it would look like to be popped up just by I'm going to cut just a little strip of these off here. This is our Gina K Designs foam squares. And I'm just going to pop it down there and, and see if I like the way it looks, because that's how much loft we would have. So what do you guys think? Do you like the popped up look? Or do you like it flat? I mean probably is pretty similar either way. Maybe that little bit of dimension is kind of cool. Let me hold it and show you. Like, do you kind of like the dimension? I, I kind of do. What are they saying, Tom? Do they like it? Do they hate it? <laughs> Flat, popped up, popped. Oh gosh, we got to figure out how to do a, okay, I, most people are saying popped up. And then a lot of you are saying either way. And then some of you are saying flat, and but most say popped up. So let's see. The black really pops, popped. Yeah. Okay, let's do it popped up. We'll do it popped up. But I agree with those of you that said flat too, because I think it looks great either way. And if you're mailing it and you want it more flat, it's a great layout to do flat. It'll totally look great flat. And this is scary to me because, you know, when you're when you're laying this down, whoo, you want it to line up perfectly. So I think that's going to look pretty good, though. I'm just kind of looking at the leaves on the side and kind of this area right here. So what some people do is they put glue on the back of their foam squares and that makes the foam squares a little slippy, little slippy, <laughs> slippery. <laughs> and this way you can shift it around a little bit. So shall we try that technique? I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it because I've heard that that is a good one to do. So I'm going to put glue on the back of these. And once the glue dries, you know, you still have the sticky in there. And then to be a little bit, okay, here we go. I'm going to have to stand over this to see this. I know Kathy got up and stood over hers yesterday. Okay, I think, I think that's looking good. But yeah, it does allow you to shift just a little bit. Oh, yeah. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, there we go. Looking good. Slippy. So now I'm going to add nothing more than a simple greeting, maybe. And I was thinking of one of these little sentiment strips right there. I think that is just enough. I don't want it to be real busy. And I don't want to put it down here because I don't like the way that looks. I love my greetings touching my focal images. I feel like it's more cohesive that way. It feels like it's supposed to be there, you know, kind of like that. Now, keep in mind that when you're doing a card like this, you don't have to do a rectangle. You could do an oval. You could do a circle. You could do whatever shape you want to do, and you can add that little bit of extra, you know, something to it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a foam square and I'm going to cut it super thin and going to put it just behind the word wishes. Okay. 
And then I'm going to put tape on the other side here. This way it'll be flat and it'll match. You know, the rise will match on both sides. So we'll put a little bit of tape on this side. And then we'll have the foam square on the other side. And then we'll find that perfect little spot. Now the way I want to line this up, the other thing I want to do to make it look a little bit better, see how I've got probably like a half inch, I'm going to guess that that's about a half inch. Yeah, about a half inch margin on this side. I want to have a half inch between here and here. That's going to make it look the most balanced because I don't want it to like, you know, be way over here. Let me see if I can show you that, like way over here. I want to have it in about the same amount on this side as on this side. And design wise, that's going to look better to your eye. So I'm taping it down here because I can move it. And then once I feel like that looks pretty good, then I can push down the foam square because that's not as forgiving. All right. And there's my finished card. Now I could add some sequins to this a couple little sparkles here and there. Maybe I'll do that, but it's not gonna be anything real vibrant and bright. It's definitely gonna be like disco ball because just a little shimmer and sparkle scattered around. And I'll probably do it here in the focal image part just because that's where I want people's eyes to be drawn. Let's just put a couple in and see how they look. So I'm really excited to see what you guys do with this technique. And remember, you know, you can post your cards in our Facebook group. I love to see what you do. Um, you guys always amaze me with everything. I know you guys are going to pick cool shapes and you guys are going to do beautiful color palettes. And I just love to see what, you, what you're going to do. It's a fun technique. Is that upside down? No, it's just tiny. Do a bigger one. A few sequins in here is a nice touch. I'm using, I mixed up my micro disco ball with my regular disco ball. So I have like all five sizes in one um, pack here. Let's see, maybe we'll put a tiny one here. I have the tiniest ones. Pop that there. It's more sticking to my gluey finger than to my card. And I can't see because I don't have my readers on. Oh my goodness. Let go of me, friend. There we go. Whew, and maybe... I know that's only four. Most of you guys like the five, but honestly, I think it looks really good with four. I'm gonna leave it at four, just the way they are there. Can you see them? Do they show up, Tom? <laughs> the sequins? They do. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so that is the two-tone stencil technique using your lights and your darks along with, um, whatever die shape you want to use, but make sure you outline it with a little bit of black. You can outline it with another color too, maybe a dark purple or, you know, whatever you want, a gray, but you know me, I can't make a card without a little black. So that is today's card. What do you think, Tom? Delightful. <laughs> cool. All right. So we're going to give this card away. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's do Just, it. Just, um, let's see. I've got to get my charger for my my computer can you give me a minute yeah i sure can okay all right well what should we talk about while tom is going to get his charger well we could talk about glasses because i'll tell you what guys um i saw today i was poking around on the internet and for those of you that wear contacts like i normally do what i do is i wear contacts i have very bad eyes so I wear contacts and I can see a thousand miles down the road, but I can't see my computer screen because my glasses are too strong. So normally I just put readers on. So I'm wearing contacts and readers. But when it comes to wearing glasses, you know, if I take the glasses off and put the readers on, that's even worse. So I found out today that they make a clip on for your glasses and it's like a reader. 
So it does the same thing as wearing readers with contacts. It just takes your prescription down a little bit so you can see closer. So I'm going to try those out and I'm going to let you guys know how I like them because I think it's a great thing for crafters. And I find that I wear my contacts way too much and my eyes get, you know, I get issues with my eyes because of it. So I'm going to try to wear my glasses a little bit more, but I need to be able to see my computer and I need to be able to see when I craft and I can't continue to wear my glasses like this in order to see. It's just, it's not a good look. <laughs> it doesn't feel good at all. <laughs> all right. So I, I see Tom's back in the corner and uh, let's, I know they have progressives and I should look at progressives. Although I'll tell you a story. <laughs> this is a bad story, but I got to tell you a story. <laughs> if there's any children in the room, send them out right now. <laughs> My dad got progressives and he was very old at the time when he got them. And uh, so he really had trouble adjusting to the distance and the up close. And he went into the restroom and he came out and he was wet in the front. And I said, dad, what happened? He said, I don't know. I looked down, I saw two. So I put one away. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so I guess you really have to adjust <laughs> to progressives. Cause if you have them positioned a little off, you see two things instead of one. Don't unsubscribe. Okay. What do you think, Tom? <laughs> okay. Let's give something away. Yeah. Let's give something away. Quick. Change the tune. Change the tone. All right. Who gets this card today, Tom? Okay. Let's do a cheesy drum roll. Whoops. They're still booing. Okay. <laughs> they're <right>. still booing. <laughs> they're busy unsubscribing. Okay. <laughs> The big winner today of this card, beautiful card, is Terry Duncan. Yay, Terry! Duncan. Terry. Ah. Hey, congratulations, Terry. Ah. You win. All you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I'll get this out to you. Well, you guys, thank you so much for being here today. We had such a great time with you. We always do. I'll be back tomorrow with another five-minute card video, and then Tom and I will be back next Tuesday night with a brand new release. We are so excited for what's coming, and I know you will be too, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.